Hi everyone, welcome to week 11. In this series of lectures, we're going to introduce the notion of quantification, which is going to be critical to what we do for the remainder of the course. We're first going to start out by looking at variables, which work syntactically a bit like constants, but have a different semantics, and at the notion of a well-formed formula. So let's take a look at the idea of variables. These are the straightforward x, y, and z terms that we encountered in algebra and elsewhere, and they work like constants in their syntactic role and unlike constants in their semantic role. So recall that constants work like names. We use the items a, b, c, but also personal names like Max and Claire. These name a specific object. But constants also had this syntactic role of combining with predicates. So you'll recall that we saw such examples as cube A and so forth, which expresses a sentence by combining a constant and a predicate. Now, variables have a similar syntactic role to constants in the sense that they combine with predicates, although unlike with constants, a simple variable plus a predicate doesn't make a sentence. So, for example, cube x doesn't express a sentence unless we put a quantifier in front of it. We'll see this in just a minute. Still, they have a very similar syntactic role in the sense that anywhere a constant can go, a variable can go too. And this also applies to things like functions, although we aren't looking at these in the course. So they don't name objects, but they're a sort of placeholder. What a variable does is hold a place so that it can be bound by a quantificational term like all or sum. And we're going to see these in the next video. But on their own, like cube x here, they don't form a sentence but a formula. And we're going to now turn to the notion of a well-formed formula, sometimes called a WIF, W-F-F. An atomic well-formed formula looks a bit like an atomic sentence, so recall our example cube x. This is a well-formed formula, although it isn't a sentence because on its own it doesn't really say anything. We're going to talk about this in a minute, but the point just is that these formulas are well-formed if there are variables and co or constants in any of their places. So for instance, taller xy is a well-formed formula, but between xy with a blank space here is not a well-formed formula. We have to plug up, as it were, all of the places with either constants or variables in order for this to be well-formed. Now there's one final remark to make on our variables before we wrap this up. And this is just that the variables in our language are infinite. So for the most part, we'll use letters from the end of the alphabet, like T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, or Z if you prefer. But we could take any one of these and make an infinite number of variables just by using numerical subscripts. So we could go X1, X2, X3, and so on. So we're supplied with an unlimited stock of variables in our language and we'll never run out. There's no level of complexity that we can reach in which we won't have any more variables to construct some further formulas with. And that's just it for the notions of what variables are, how many of them we have, how they combine with predicates or function symbols or so forth to make well-formed formulas.